Gentlemen, live at Hope Mill Theatre. Hosted by Michelle Eagleton and Belinda Scandal. Welcome to your Manchester Live. Oh, it's so exciting and it's happening really soon. It is. It's happening on the 23rd of March at Hope Mill Theatre. We've got some great guests lined up. Brilliant. We're going to be revealing those very soon, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But back to today, though, we have got a very healthy show. We have, actually. We've got oh. a bit of everything in terms of like a bit of fitness. We've got some healthy food. It, it, yeah. Mm. I'll be sat over here thinking about the pork pies. In the meantime, sit back, relax, get yourself ready for another fabulous episode of Your Manchester. Manchester. Now, some of you may find the next clips a little bit scary. That is because we're taking a look at the international stage show Ghost Stories, which is on at the Lowry between the 18th and 22nd of February. Your Manchester spoke to BAFTA award-winning Jeremy Dyson. He's the co-writer and co-director of this. Check it out. Right, we've just celebrated our 10th anniversary. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it opened in, uh, in Liverpool on, uh, I think, the 4th of February in 2010, yeah. And then I've read that they that you made some box office sort of records. records. Yes, it broke. It did. Bro it did at the at the Liverpool Playhouse and at the Lyric. It um, it was very exciting because it kind of uh, it had its own momentum that really surprised us. You know, it wasn't what we'd anticipated or expected, and and uh, it hasn't really stopped for, in one way or another for ten years. You know, what with the film and uh, in the middle and everything. With it being a, a theatrical play mm. first and then going into a film, are there any sort of differences that you? Can oh make? yeah, they're very. It's very different things. So if, even if you've seen the film but not seen the show, it's uh, it's, a, it's a very different experience. Um, tonally, it's quite different. It's the same sort of story, but the way it works on stage is very different from how it works in a film. And it's designed as a, as a show to be. A very immersive experience, and uh, that you, you know you, you're taken on the ride as an audience. You don't know what's going to happen when you come in, and that's all part of the fun. And uh, it picks you up by the scruff of the neck and doesn't let you go for 82 months. Should fans sort of expect if they if they've seen the film, what they come into the play should they come with no expectations? You know, part of the thing about the show is is we've tried to keep as much of it secret as we can. And actually, one of the remarkable things is given how long it's it's, it's been out there now. It's generally, that's still the case. You know, audiences cut. We ask the audiences to keep the secrets, and they do. Uh, and that's which is a remarkable thing to me and Andy. But they do, and, and and that's part of the pleasure. We wanted it to. Everything's spoiled for you nowadays. You know, you see it, every trailer tells you the whole film, and you know everything. There's instant spoilers every when you watch something on TV. So we really wanted to try and create something that where that wasn't the case, where you could go in and not know anything about it and, and, and not have that experience spoiled for you in advance. And so it's very, we're very pleased that that's generally still the case with the station. My job is to try and untangle the truth from the fiction. So what did Jeremy Dyson want the fans to know? Don't miss Ghost Stories the show, because it is a one-off experience. And it, you know, even if you don't like horror, or think you don't like horror, we have loads of people who come and say, oh, I don't like horror, but I love that. And finally, what's next for Jeremy? Well, we have, me and Andy have just finished uh, another film script. It's not a Ghost Stories 2, though. It is, it's, it's a new, uh, it is a new story, new, completely new thing. So um, we're just going to start trying to put that together Are there any this year. Maybe sneak peeks? No spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. You don't know everything, do you? Hmm. <laughs> Mm, and mm, this is the part of the show where I'll be sat here watching, observing, taking note. We're going to hand over the first time to our lovely CJ. And he's joined by somebody that's just dying to do a bit of exercise. Take it away. Well, it is time to get physical. And I mean by that, by introducing you to the lovely CJ who we met last week. And he's going to put me through my paces, aren't you, CJ? Yes, I am. So we've prepared this quick workout, which anyone can do from home and uh, it's just to get the blood pumping, make you feel a bit better, 
and uh, hopefully it will help with your mental health as well. And we're talking an all over workout, aren't we, this one? Yes, Arms, yeah. legs, stomachs? Yes, yes it is. Everything you can imagine this workout will cover. Come on, let's get cracking then. What are we starting off with first? All then? right then, so we are going to be starting off with squats. We're going to work our way from the bottom to the top. Um, and squats. So what we'll do, we'll just get into a squat position. Okie dokie. Feet about 15 degrees. Make sure your knees are over your ankles. And we're just going to go down and we're going to do a squat. You can do it above your head, you can do your hands in front, whichever feels most comfortable to you. Okay. Make sure, now make sure when you're doing your squat that you are sitting back and you're not just bending your back. How many backwards. of these are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> well. It's a good job CJ's doing this. He can count, I can't. Right, OK. So should you do a couple of repetitions of those if you've got time? Yeah, I mean, if it starts to feel a bit easier, start 30 seconds, go up to 45, maybe a minute. Make sure after about every two minutes you do take a 30 second rest though. Brilliant. OK, it's got my heart pounding already. And that's just CJ in pink. <laughs> carry on though, what have we got next? Right, Teal, so the next one we're going to carry on with our legs. We're going to do some lunges. Uh, what this will do, this will do your quads, your hamstrings, and of course your glutes, which is a big thing nowadays. So yes. let's uh, crack on with this. So we'll go left foot first. OK. And just lunge forward. And when you do do a lunge, it is important that you do go out to the side just a little bit, just so you feel comfortable. We'll do about 16, so we'll do eight on each leg. Oh, he's pushing Six, me now. Seven, eight. There we go. So <sighs> that's the lower part done. Can you feel it? I can. I can feel a little bit of a burn going on, Brilliant. which is uh, it's good. It feels satisfying. That's good. That means I'm doing my job, so that's good. Right, and then we're going to get into a press-up position now. So we're going to do the chest and the triceps. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. Do you want me to demonstrate this? Because uh, we're a bit tight for space in this studio. Yes, yes. Right, I'm going to get a pillow. A lovely your Man Manchester-branded <laughs> pillow. Uh, right, so in terms of a press-up, I'm going to go for the diamond press-up. Is that all right? Yes, that is a good alternative. Uh, sometimes a normal press-up can be quite difficult for most people. So a diamond press-up is a good, healthy alternative to this. Here we go. There's a reason Belinda's not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really important when you're doing your press-up as well, if you do want to get that extra burn and just make it a bit more difficult for yourself, uh, tense your stomach and make sure that your back is straight. Is it flat? Yeah, just there. Uh, squeeze your lower a little bit. Brilliant now. Can you feel that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. It is a good feeling though, because it's nice if you're feeling that something you know that it's working yeah yes exactly you want to be feeling the burn not to a point of you know there's a difference between muscle soreness and you know oh my god what have i done to my joints and you can build that up can't you start off with maybe 30 seconds and build up to a minute yeah yes that's absolutely correct okay with our last exercise we have got the shoulder plank yes so this is just like what we were doing before you want to get into a plank position hands flat Elbows, just think about stacking your joints. So you want your shoulders and your elbows to be above your wrists. Yeah. And what you want to do with this one is squeeze and just move your arm forward and to the right. Move your arm forward and to the right and to the left. You want to just keep practicing this movement just to get that flexion in the shoulders. Uh huh. And this is obviously for those who are a bit more advanced. Yes. Maybe not start off with this one. Yes, uh, there are some other shoulder exercises. But I can't show them right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you need to come back another time, yes. CJ. So that is a four minute exercise, which you can be doing at home, on your own or with a friend. But uh, for now, I think we need a bit of a refueling. And I believe our Emily has been cooking in the kitchen. So, hi guys, and welcome back to Emily's Kitchen. Today we're making some lovely chickpea blondies. Yes, you heard me correctly, I did say chickpea, and we're gonna make them really sweet, really unctuous, really delicious, how you've probably never had chickpeas before. So for the chickpea blondies, you're gonna need a can of chickpeas, which you're going to drain and rinse, some peanut butter, or any natural almond butter or similar, some maple syrup, baking powder, vanilla extract, and some chocolate chips but make sure they're vegan. You'll also need a teaspoon of salt and some nice oil to spray your pan. So first off, you want to line your baking tray with some baking paper. Give it a little spray with your oil. And then you're gonna preheat your oven to about 180. 
So for this recipe we're using our trusty food processor and it really is as simple as all of these ingredients are going in. So you're going to put in your drained chickpeas, your maple syrup, you've got your teaspoon of salt and your teaspoon of baking powder, your delicious natural nut butter, and then two teaspoons of vanilla essence. And all you want to do is blend this up. So I find it a really good little trick to spray your spatula with a little bit of oil because this just helps push all the butter down from the outside and it helps when you're going to mix in your chocolate chips. Okay, so once you've got your butter, you want to get your baking tray that's obviously got your oil in it and scoop your batter evenly into the baking tray. It smells amazing. You then want to flatten it down so it's all even. And now it's time to add your chocolate chips. Now I'd add two thirds of the bag, saving yourself about a third for the top. Mix it in. And last but not least, you're going to finish it off with those extra chocolate chips. Spread them out if need be. Great, I'll just go in the oven. And we want to leave that for about 25 minutes or until you can pop a knife right down the centre and take it out and it's clean. And if you fancy making these at home, here's the recipe again. So they look about ready. Uh, all we need to do now is transfer it and it's ready to portion. So chickpea chocolate blondies. Why not give them a try? They're high in protein, no flour, no eggs, no milk, no butter. So if you want something a little bit sweet, give it a bit of a treat. So look, she bought us some. She's given us some. I thought they'd bring this to the... Because they're healthy, apparently. This is healthy. Yeah. Apart from the chocolate. So do you want to try one? I definitely do want to try one. They looked amazing. You have a right? go as well. And just, just little bites, mate. You don't want to overdo it, do you? Oh. Uh. There's always one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Emily. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. usually mouthful. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I've now mm -hmm. finished my bit of the brownie. Mm -hmm. Shall I hand over to the lovely Hayley, mm -hmm. who, I'm sorry, Hayley, we haven't got any for you. Mm -mm. Hi, I'm Hayley and welcome to On The Box. Now tonight I want to talk to you about films that are coming into the cinema for Valentine's Day. The first one is The Photograph and that is about a photographer who unexpectedly dies and she actually leaves her daughter hurt and full of so many questions but then a photograph is found by her daughter and it means that May, her daughter, finds herself on a journey delving into her mother's early life and ignites a powerful unexpected romance with a rising star journalist. There's Fantasy Island as well, there is Sonic the Hedgehog, now that was due out last year but when it was first shown as the original trailer a lot of people weren't happy about the design of Sonic. So when you see it come out, Sonic fans, let us know what you think of this new design, tweet us at your MCR and at Hey Kate. Also we have What About Love, two young people somewhat wary of love actually spend the summer together in Europe. Ordinary Love, and that stars Leslie Manville and Liam Neeson, two of my favourite actors, so that is a must-watch as well. Come As You Are, this is about three young men with disabilities, and they escape from their overbearing parents and go on a road trip to a brothel catering for people with special needs. Now remember, love comes in many forms, so you have a good Valentine's. Bye. Mmm, she makes sense, doesn't she, Ariela? Yeah, hey, absolutely. absolutely. She is. Yes. See what I did there? Something similar. Now listen, we have got to wrap it up now because look at you, you're full of exercise and endorphins. So and I've had a great time. I've had food, I'm happy. Yeah, and All's even good. better. Yes. We come back and do the same thing next week, but the girls are in the house. The girls are in the house. The girls are in the house, but they're out of the house. They're going to watch Shangri La. Oh, Shangri La. Yeah, I remember we did Welcome to Shangri La. We they're did. out and about watching we did. that. And loads, loads more. Make sure you click on this button here to subscribe, that button there to like, and we'll see you all this time next week for another fantastic episode of Your Manchester. Manchester. You did that dead quick, she just wants to look around. I'm going right back. It's good as well, though, wasn't it? No, you were s. I was good. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, yeah. oh, right. The game is on. <laughs> <laughs>